All right, Milo, let's talk about hand path and explain how the path of the hands can be determined by a few different factors and what our viewers at home should be working towards. You and I are both stronger grip players, especially our left hand, all right? Yeah. Our right hands tend to kind of match the face, give or take. More or less, yeah. Right, but our left hand, you guys can really see that glove logo on our left hands. Oh yeah. Yeah. Now, could that determine a little bit of how our hands travel in a golf swing? Yeah, I'd say through a lot of research and just looking at golf swings, players that have stronger grips and stronger faces at the top of their swing, their hands generally don't move as much down in the downswing. And by that, they don't need as much shoulder extension because they don't need that element to square the face for them. So there's, the thing you have to understand is there are tons of different matchups and tons of ways to square a golf club. And Wait, so you're saying there's different golf swings out there? Well, some would argue <laughs> that there's one way to do it, but there's not. It's infinite and there's infinite matchups. Yeah. And I would say that there's ranges that you want to stay within kind of parameters. Mm -hmm. So there's things you can do that are really off, but there's also things you could do that are different. Like you could have two sides of a, a spectrum, like a Bubba Watson and a Sergio Garcia. <laughs> Two of the best drivers, two of the best players in the last generation, yep. and they're total opposites as far as how their hands move in space, the paths that they go on. Well, and I said at the beginning, you and I are both stronger grip players, but I would say our paths differ a fair amount. If yeah. you look especially up towards mm, from P3 to P5 or so, right, your hands tend to get more vertical. Yeah and then they sort of shallow back on plane. Mine get a little deeper yep. back behind me and kind of stay on the plane, swing plane. And you're, you, you kind of plane the shaft and then come down the same plane more or less that you went up on. And yep. I have a variable plane. My, my, it's not Matt Wolf, but it definitely has some elements of that in it. Now, anatomically, you and I are both a little different. Your arms are longer. And I'm shorter than you. Right, so your long, your your wingspan is actually greater than your height, whereas I'm more about about even. Yeah. Right. So for me, you know, my arms might feel like they swing a little more around me. Maybe they feel like they swing around you, but their the hands get higher. Yeah, I can't make them go more around mm -hmm. them. I feel like I make them go perfectly around, and they go up. Yeah. So now, why would that be? Well, there's a lot of variables there, but I would say where the joints are placed. So my elbow might be in a slightly different position than yours mm -hmm. relative to my hands. So when they hinge, they hinge more up where yours hinge more back. Yeah. I also think your baseball background has a little bit to do with it. Probably. You probably tipped the bat pretty good, right? Yeah, I had a little bit of that. Yeah. Your right elbow tends to get a little higher flying elbow, I guess you might call it, than mine. Yeah. Um, you don't get as crazy as some people out there, but there's a little bit of that. But yeah, I would say that the path at the top, there's a lot of anatomical stuff we got to look at for player, right, to yeah, determine that. Totally. So if I see someone that has a little higher hands, if I try to make them really deep, that could be really detrimental to their golf swing. It could be, and it could be something that helps. It just depends on the player. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to understand how to match things to their grip and their face so that their path mat lines up. So it's, some of it you have to let the ball dictate. Mm -hmm. You don't want to just say, oh, we're going to change this, when in reality, they look like their hands are way out here, but the, the shaft shallows out, and then late it, yep. the handle comes back in, and they sling the club out, and they hit these perfect, like, Carl Peterson draws. You ever watch that golf swing? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Hands yeah. went way out above the, the ball line, and then whipped back in late, and he hit draws. It's like... Now you're going to make me add that to the video, huh? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> But, you know, in your case, too, I was thinking about your long arms, right? And how they do move more out in transition. And how your swing plane, you're not really coming from in here. You're actually more, you're shallowing back to, like, sort of the shoulder plane. Yeah. Right? The club's coming down actually on a little 
more woods, vertical plane more vertical plane um, and you're creating space for yourself mm -hmm. because you're again your arms are longer yeah. it would be the way I swing a golf club for a lot of people would be like how they would have to swing if they squatted down low mm -hmm. if they went like this their arms would have to get more out here yeah. well, that's, that's basically what I've got going on I've got monkey arms and a short and I'm small so that's how my that's how things have to move for me yeah just somebody actually made the comment imagine if you were on your knees what would your hands look like yeah well that's kind of what's happening to me is mm -hmm. I got six foot plus wingspan and I'm five nine so it's like and then in my case um, I feel like sometimes I play my absolute best when the swing feels like this it feels like a baseball swing where it's just around and around. And then if anything, I might have a little bit more flex from the hips at setup than you do, where you're a little bit more a little tucked more under, a little taller. Mm -hmm. I get sometimes a little bit more down. Um, and then from there, it's just swing around, around, and it's, it's more of that one plane feel. Yeah. So there are differences. You gotta look for those and make sure that you're, you're not trying to get into a matchup that might not help you. You know, and that's one thing we really try to pinpoint um, in our teaching in our academy too. Well, that's it's the hardest thing is being able to not screw people up, do no harm, because you could try to put the, a person into a model, and it doesn't work that great for that player. Mm -hmm. So I try to just go with athletic motion and let the player's body dictate where their hands and arms and some of the things, some of the variables that happen. I let them happen. Because I've seen you coach hundreds of lessons, and I've seen you coach players where they have a really weak grip, and that, that right arm comes more down like this in their transition, and then their handle gets really low through the hitting area, and it kind of looks like their impact's more like that. Mm -hmm. And I've also seen you coach players more like myself, where it's a little stronger, and my hands actually travel from back here. They actually move out towards the ball in transition, something that we've gotten comments on and said you shouldn't be doing that you shouldn't be practicing that <laughs> well i gotta get the club to the ball somehow right yeah and since you already have a strong club face you don't any lowering of the handle like this now your club face is dead shut that ball's going dead left we were also talking off the camera about how it seems like a lot of the hand paths we've seen over time especially a lot of the the legends of old their hand path was a little bit more in towards the pocket, then kind of up the plane, and then out slightly in transition. Yeah, I would say that would probably be the most common pattern you'd see amongst great players. In, up, out. Okay, but isn't that over the top? The path of the hands really doesn't dictate whether or not you're over the top. You can be over the, you can have your hands coming over the top and have the club shallowing out exactly yeah and then the hands come in late there's a lot of ways to do it if, now, any, if anything it's a little bit of the opposite yeah i find that the hands coming down like this is a much more you're much more apt to tumble it out over the top yeah and in, even in the takeaway i was just thinking if my hands stay in and low typically those are the players where the club stays out in front of them yeah right and then like you said if the hands travel back out on the plane, typically, if you don't pull down, that club will fall behind. So it's almost the opposite. Well, it's like, I, I like to go back to just swinging a baseball bat, mm -hmm. swinging a stick. If my hands went down like this, the barrel would never want to kick back where I want it. Mm -hmm. So I want my hands to travel into the arc I want them on right away. Yep. And then the barrel lines up. I don't really like to see a lot of down in a golf swing if I can, if, if all the other variables are there. Now there are reasons for that to be there and some players I'll send them into that pattern, but it's not, it's not my preference. So as you can see from this topic, it's a fairly complicated topic. Hand path and which way the hands should go. You know, there's lots of variations. I would say, let's just, there's a window the hands either go kind of toward the ball or down towards your toes and they follow that channel. If they're going more back than that, it's probably too far back. And if they're going much more out than the ball, it's probably too far out. Mm -hmm. 
So let's kind of try to stay in that corridor and not get too nitpicky about the hand path as long as our club path is decent. All right, Milo, so I have a way we can show the difference between you and me. Again, similar grips, but we're gonna have slightly different hand paths in the golf swing. So I'm gonna give you a golf ball. I'm gonna give you a golf ball. And we're gonna tee these up and you're gonna stand right behind me, try not to kill me, and I'll try not to kill you. I'll, How about that? I'll try, I'll try my best not to shank it into you. <laughs> it's more me potentially killing you, right? Yeah. Let me see your fall through real fast. <laughs> I gotta move back about. Really? Just no. Ahead. Not much. Just so I can be confident in my my in not getting killed. Okay, I'm good. I'll have the assistant kill the the, the boss, right? <laughs> okay, you ready? All right. When are we going? I'll, I'll count us down. Three, two, one. I pured it. Me too. Good. I'll try to slow that down. Hopefully they're comparable in timing. I tried to swing slow back so I could, try, <laughs> so I, I could catch you. Great, I screwed up your hand path. That was all right, I hit it good. All right guys, we hope you enjoyed this video. Like we said, it's a complex topic, but don't try to get so nitpicky with your hand path. Let's, let's see how that club is tracing. Let's make sure it's really good from hip high to hip high. That's really what matters. Totally.